Well, again, good morning, everyone. I hope you had a nice a holiday or long holiday weekend. Um, and hopefully you'll have a great New Year's as well. And uh, we are here to talk about the tier three principal and coach meeting. We did recognize that it is um, during some for some of you during your holiday vacation. Um, so those of you who are here, thank you very much. We are recording it. So um, if you, we know everyone who needs it, we will get it out to them as soon as it is ready for viewing. So, uh, so our agenda today is to look at our year at a glance and to also just a couple of updates um, to look at the leadership team agenda, uh, structure and content. The role of the, just a kind of review of the role of the leadership team the purpose of leadership team meetings, the role of the school leadership coach, and um, just provide you some professional learning opportunities and some resources. And we hope there will be plenty of time at the end to have you ask any of your questions um, or thoughts that you may have. So like we always like to do our meetings, we like to re reference our year at a glance. Um, and I apologize. I think I forgot to say who I am. I just assume everybody knows who I am, but I am Monique Sullivan and I am the Continuous School Improvement Coordinator. And I am also joined, um, uh, Cheryl's also joining us, Cheryl Lang, and um, sh she can say something or she's the ESA director. Good morning, everyone. And as Monique said, uh, for those of you, I think I know everybody looking at the um, people in the meeting, um, but for those of you who don't know me, I am the ESCA Federal Programs Director. So let me get back to it. So our year at a glance, this is the MOU and it's kind of a, a guideline or kind of like a just kind of helpful to when you're trying to figure out what the purpose of the leadership team meeting is. Uh, we did ask that these, the purpose of the meetings get outlined and decided when you were setting up your application or your school improvement application. And that um, we recognize that as things change, those purposes may change, but just at a glance, this is kind of what you should be talking about in your leadership uh, team meetings or should be focusing on um, with your leadership um, team. And the last you know, focus of the previous meetings, we have that, you know, August, September um, and October, November, we did our meeting together. And then today's focus is looking at progress monitoring, you know, time this time of the year, you'd be progress monitoring, having data discussions, tools and resources, um, resource discussions. The kind of the primary premise or the focus of today's um, um, meeting or is going to be on looking at the uh, leadership team agenda and how that can be used as a tool to further your continuous school um, strategic plan. And I just put on the side here that no, this is actually found on page two of the MOU. Uh, we think it's a great resource to you to try to, to use to, to plan out the purposes of your leadership team meetings. Um, and that it is really important that you have a purpose um, for all of your LT meetings. And a few updates. So I'm sure a lot of you already know, but we wanted to say congratulations to Cheryl. She is going to be re re uh, retiring in a couple of weeks. And so congratulations to her. Um, with that, we discovered that this Zoom link that has all the meetings set up for the year is going to change because it is linked to Cheryl. So when Cheryl leaves, that that link will become, um, will not be able, will not, will be ineffective. So it won't work anymore. So um, I will be sending out another Zoom link for these meetings between, for starting in January until June so that you will have a new link that will be coming your way. And um, the this link won't work anymore after Cheryl leaves. Um, we don't think it'll work because I think they shut everything down uh, when a person separates from, from the state. Um, and as far as we know, I know this is always a question, what happens, you know, who's gonna replace Cheryl? Um, we, at this point, we don't know um, what that's going to happen and, you know, what's, how that's going to work. So in the interim, um, Jeanette will serve um, as the um, interim ES direct, director until further notice. We don't know what the, when that's going to change or we're not really sure about that. So if you have like 
questions that you might um, refer to Cheryl, then you'll refer those to Jeanette. You might CC me if it is relevant to me as well. Yes, and Jeanette is the um, director or the chief of federal programs. Thank you, Cheryl. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, I know a lot of you have seen your MOUs. Uh, maybe you haven't looked at them in a few in a little bit, um, but we just wanted to go back and look at the role of the leadership team. Um, and this is on page two um, and three of the MOU. It's kind of split between those two pages. And it talks about, the first bullet talks about who should be a part of the leadership team. And then the rest of the bullets talk about kind of the work of the leadership team and what the leadership team should do, including, you know, the minimum amount of time they should meet each month, um, some of the work that they should do to complete um, the strategic plan and the school, the application, the school improvement grant application, what kind of work they should do, you know, during the meantime, um, looking at evidence-based professional learning, um, monitoring the plan, uh, and then interacting with your leadership coach um, and anyone else at the department that can provide um, support in implementing the strategic plan. So just wanted to take a few minutes um, and think about some questions. Um, just maybe take a couple of minutes just to think about them. Thinking about the role of the leadership team and your leadership team right now that you have in your school um, in regards to the school um, improvement plan or the strategic plan. Uh, what are areas of strength for your leadership team? I mean, we're looking at what the role is. What are some of your strengths? What are the areas of growth for your leadership team? And then where does your leadership team need assistance? And just take a couple of things, um, minutes to think about that, a couple seconds, um, especially um, with the leadership team needs assistance, because that helps us to think about um, where we can provide support as well. Um, and that might generate some discussion right now. I think we have a few minutes if there's um, any clarity you need on those questions or anything, any other clarity you need with the role of the leadership team. I know we're all still kind of recovering from <laughs> Christmas, so I will move on, but keep in mind that there are leadership uh, school leadership coaches that are attending this meeting as well. So if you um, want to express um, your responses to your leadership coach in regards to these questions, um, let them know and then they can get that back to us as well. Or you can reach out to me or to Cheryl before she leaves um, with any of your responses as well. And then the role of the leadership coach. Um, there's a lot of different pieces here, a lot of different um, kind of responsibilities, but also intentions for school leadership coaches. And I'll give you a few minutes. And again, this is on page five of your um, MOU. Um, give you a couple, it is trying to make it as big as possible, but try to get it all on one slide. So thinking about this, um, how does your leadership team uh, utilize the school leadership coach and what role does the school leadership coach play in the implementation of your school strategic plan? Now there is a reference here in the school leadership coach, um, the lead model. And this is a model of coaching that our school um, leadership coaches are using. And it's, I can never remember the acronym, but I know Cheryl does. 
Um, and it's basically uh, kind of a model that um, acknowledges the hard work that our schools are doing, um, looks at a design of what you identify your needs, looking at your strengths and your areas of growth, and then helping the school leadership team, the school leadership coach helps leadership teams design and there you go, listen, empath empathize, appreciate and design um, to get to uh, that strategic plan and then to help monitor and implement that plan so that there can be continuous school improvement. Um, and through that process, there's a data analysis, there's root cause analysis, goal determination, ongoing CNA updates, and then whatever professional development is needed to be able to implement that plan. So keeping all that in mind, I'm kind of gonna pre do kind of a pre here. And this where if you guys wanna take yourself off mute, that, mute, that would be um, kind of, um, you can do that as well. It's kind of quiet today. But when we were getting ready for this presentation, we were trying to think what would be one of the tools that our leadership teams could use to help direct their the work that they do in their leadership team, but also to make sure that they're monitoring um, and uh, their, their strategic plan. And so we actually, these examples came from coach comments that are put in to grants for me, um, leadership team meeting agendas and minutes that are also put in grants for me, um, and observations from MDOE attendance at leadership team meetings. I know that I've attended several, Cheryl has, um, and Renee did too, when um, she was in this role. And so we want to see like, which of these agenda items belong at a school leadership team meeting or at a staff meeting? We're not going to kind of, um, we're gonna wait until the end of this presentation to kind of review where they would sit. But thinking about like, these are actual examples that came that we actually um, got from actual leadership team meetings this year. Um, and so there was you know, some discussion about the selection of math PD aligned with strategic plan and growth areas, talking about a school cookbook, um, chocolate versus white milk being served at breakfast, um, review of May through year assessment, um, discussion about wise ways of a particular indicator. Um, so just take a few minutes. Would you know if you had to go through quickly here? Would you say you know which ones would belong at a leadership team meeting and which would belong at another staff meeting. Knowing that all of these items are very important and there's no like they shouldn't be happening or have that discussion at a school, but which ones should be happening at a school leadership team meeting and which ones maybe should be happening at a different type of staff meeting. So just take a few, a little bit of time to look at that. Um, and we will go over these more, um, a little bit more at the end after we talk about the school leadership team meeting agenda. And there's also another, these are also some more examples that we gathered from actual leadership team meetings this year. Um, so I'll give you a few, a little bit of time to look at those. And I know I'm going through this uh, fairly quickly. We are recording this and we will make the slide presentation available to you. Um, the slide presentation might be available quicker than the uh, recording because we have certain protocols that we have to go through before we're able to post this on our um, YouTube channel. But again, you know, like looking at these actual topic areas that were on leadership team agendas and meetings. So 
Um, you had a few minutes to look at those actual examples that we found from leadership team meetings. And with the idea that we're using the leadership team meeting agenda and the structure of that agenda as a tool to help with the continuous improvement in school and uh, strategic plan, we had asked, I think when I made this reminder, sent it out through grants for me um, last week, um, asked everybody just to do a quick review of the Wise Ways Indicator ID08. And I did send it as an attachment. Hopefully you were able to get that through grants for me. But I just I did take a quick screenshot of just part of it this morning. And this is kind of what we are referencing um, when we talk about the structure of the leadership team meetings and things that should be uh, discussion should happen at leadership team meetings and any kind of discussions that should happen at leadership team meetings to be used as a tool, not only to uh, run the leadership team meeting, but also to monitor the strategic plan. So it is wise ways. Um, I was going to put the, um, I don't know if you can share, but I'll, I can try to put the, um, the link in there. Um, oh, there it is. So that's the wise ways. This is where this come from. This comes from, and it talks about, and this is also in Darago star. Um, and it talks about the role of the leadership team and what their, you know, the goal of that is and some of the work that they should be doing during that time. So again, thinking of the leadership team meeting or the leadership meeting structure using the agenda as a tool, um, we did kind of create a basic template for leadership team agendas. Um, and I'm sure Cheryl can put that link in, in the chat as well. It is a Google Doc and it is shared. So I think I made it so that you have to make a copy so you won't be typing over anybody else's. But that's kind of what all the screenshots that are going to be shown in this presentation are taken from that template. So when you're thinking about your leadership team, and all this comes from the Wise Ways Indicator um, ID08, which I have um, down at the bottom of this slide. So your agenda items should have time set for them. You should have an item facilitator. Um, there should be some type of coach comment review celebrations. Um, ongoing CNA update, some data analysis, ongoing resource equity audit, and ongoing strategic plan, and any kind of next steps. So thinking about how your leadership team agendas are set up now or how they have been in the last few months, um, do your L leadership team meeting agendas include these ongoing items? And we're going to talk more about kind of some questions you can ask yourself. And again, um, these are just ongoing items, depending on where you are in your strategic plan, um, where you are in the monitoring and your action steps. Um, some of these areas may be more elaborate than others during your um, leadership team meetings and setting up your agenda. But this really is the structure um, that should be utilized or referenced when you're setting up your agendas. So again, this is from the template. Um, you know, you want to have your date, your time, your attendees. Um, you want to reference, if you don't already, that Wise Ways Indicator um, 08 and also expectations from the MO for the memor Memorandum of Understanding. Um, and it is a, you know, what the what the evidence is showing, evidence-based research is showing is that you should be meeting twice a month for at least three hours a month. Um, you know, some set that up as an hour and a half, some make it, you know, make their meetings a little longer or a little shorter and have more meetings. It's really going to be dependent on your school. Um, and the focus of the school leadership team meeting really should be on that school improvement plan cycle and the ongoing progress monitoring of it. And school leadership team meetings should function differently from school staff meetings. Um, and we're going to talk more a little more about that with the template and um, decide how much time is going to be needed for each of the to complete each of the items. Agenda item purpose. So there should be some ongoing items in there. Like I said, some are going to might be more in depth than others, depending on what you're talking about and depending on where you are in that data cycle. 
and you may have more data on certain action steps. You may have less data on other action steps. And um, set agenda items, you know, intentionally. And I think that's really important to talk about because I've had some discussions with principals and um, and some of the feedback that I provided in when I review the applications. And it's been indicated that some agendas are kind of on the fly and others are not. So hopefully with this template and this kind of these this guidance, it will help set the agenda and the purpose and reinforce the purpose of the leadership team and also really help leadership teams monitor their strategic plans. And then item facilitator. Um, again, we really want to stress the shared leadership and that the leadership team does not fall solely on the responsibility of the principal. Yes, the principal should be leading the work, but isn't the person that should be doing all of the work. It is about shared leadership and looking at your school leadership team and thinking about what are your strengths and what are roles that others on that leadership team can take over and look at, and maybe they would facilitate items that are um, on your leadership team agenda. It really is about building capacity of the leadership team and also having a shared leadership approach. And that's really much also about the lead model that our school coaches are utilizing with their, with, in their school coaching. And it is also helpful to articulate to articulate the leadership team member's name and role, um, especially if you're trying to base it on member interest and expertise. So we're just breaking it down by section now. And um, again, wanna stress that some of these areas may be more in depth than others, depending on where you are. And the first thing we really wanna talk about is the coach comment review. So your coaches do spend um, a, a good amount of time when they interact with your leadership team and they then put their coaches comments in grants for me. And so we really would like that to be a part, it should be a part of every um, leadership team meeting. And again, the depth of that will depend on the comment and depend on where you are in your leadership team agenda. So, you know, some questions to think about are, you know, what reflections do the LT members have about the most recent coach comments provided in grants for me? Um, and um, any of any also any of the consultant checklist feedback, because I provide my comments in the consultant checklist and our school um our school leadership coaches provided in the history log. So looking at both of those to and seeing like how that, what um, the leadership team, how the leadership team is responding to those. Um, and if there's any action steps that are needed. So I know that there are coaches that will put in like next steps or things to think about where is the leadership team in those comments. Also, when I put comments in the consultant checklist as well. Um, and then who is documenting this review and discussion in the meeting minutes. Um, so that's just things to think about. And again, is your leadership team reviewing coach comments and are they responding to coach uh, feedback about the strategic plan? So this is just ongoing. And again, it may be five minutes, it may be 20 minutes depending or longer depending on the coach's comments of the topic um, that um, is at hand. Uh, the next would be celebrations. Um, and I think the key piece here is celebrations are great. We want schools to celebrate all the wonderful things that are happening in their schools. Uh, what we wanna really stress is that the leadership team um, is the school improvement or the for this particular leadership team, the focus is on the continuous improvement plan or the journey, it's on the strategic plan. So we really want um, schools to think about their celebrations in relation to their strategic plan. So think about guiding questions, looking at your action steps, where are you, like what can you celebrate in regards to your school improvement plan? Um, if you had, we're gonna implement an action step and you're able to do it, um, if you were able to do something successfully or, you know, like think about it in those, in those regards. 
Um, just general celebrations, those are, we want those to be more at a different staff meeting and not so much focused, not at a leadership team meeting. So what are your most recent continuous school improvement journey successes? What progress have you made towards meeting your strategic plan goals and accomplishing outcomes, either long or short term? And then some like, you know, um, statements that your LT uh, members could finish. I used to think, and now I think because we implemented this particular strategy or action step, this is what happened. So that's the kind of celebrations uh, that we're encouraging the leadership teams to talk about in their leadership team meetings um, each month. So again, thinking about are your leadership team celebrations directly connected to the strategic plan? And then just an ongoing CNA update. And again, it's depending on where you are and what data is available. So if you know a lot of your some of your CNA data revolves around the May through year assessment, obviously you're not going to be talking, you won't be updating that necessarily because that May through year assessment is only given in the spring. But think about your progress monitoring data. Anything that you're doing that like attendance data or behavior or you know, any kind of other data that you're doing locally, uh, that should be you know, ongoing CNA updates. So looking at your up your CNA, seeing what area what areas of the data can be updated um, and monitoring that and not just waiting until uh, the next cycle of applications are doing like, oh, we got to update our CNA. So these CNAs should be updated and should be re continually reviewed on an ongoing basis. So these are just some areas that we thought about. Your CNA, um, also the level and depth that you review each meeting is going to be, again, dependent on the data that you're using and your um, each school is going to be a little different. And then data analysis, very similarly, um, in regards to your, to your strategic plan, um, is there any new data that can be provided by LT members? Um, did you have an assessment, a local assessment? Did you implement a strategic, some action step in your strategic, strategic plan and now you're reviewing the results of that? Um, what does your data tell the team about the progress toward the school's goals? Because again, this is a continuous school improvement plan. So we're not waiting only one time a year to look at it. We're coming back and we're doing progress monitoring um, continuously. So again, is your LT continually analyzing data that is directly connected to the strategic plan and the action steps? Because we don't want in June for school leadership teams to now be like, oh, we got to look at the success of our plan. We should be doing that continuously throughout the, throughout the year. Um, again, your ongoing strategic plan, you're looking at your action steps, thinking about what have been implemented, where are we in the um, in the implementation of those action steps, uh, for progress monitoring. Uh, and then the question, the thought-provoking question is, is your LT monitoring the progress and implementation of the strategic plan? And this is an area that um, I think sometimes the resource um, equity audit. We talked about it in our October slash November meeting. Um, you're also looking at when you did your, uh, started your plan, you did, uh, you know, identified your growth areas and your strengths. And then you also did, you know, looked at resource inequities and did a root cause analysis. So you wanna come back to that resource equity audit and see, okay, we identified these areas as being inequities where are we in our plan? Are we addressing those areas? Um, and again, this is going to be ongoing depending on where you are. Um, and we just wanted to, we used this at our last meeting, but you know, resource equity audits are based on areas that are within a school's local locus of control. So thinking about, um, you know, if we're thinking about, you know, like homeless, I know some people will say homeless is an area of inequity. Well, thinking from a school's perspective, I can't really, you know, what can I control? Can I really control the homelessness? I can't really, maybe I can't really find homes uh, for our students that are uh, don't are homeless, but maybe we can provide some training to our staff that will help them be more 
um, identify it or be able to have strategies, techniques to do it, to um, work with students who are. So that's within your local sub control or like instructional time or attention. So thinking about um, areas that are within the school's locus of control. Uh, kind of review from last meeting. And then lastly, next steps. So you always wanna have next steps at the end of your, um, before you move, you know, adjourn for your leadership team. And like I keep saying, that's really gonna depend on where you are in your, um, your strategic plan, where you are in the progress monitoring. Um, and you wanna be specific about what the next steps are for before the next meeting. Um, who's going to be the roles people are going to play in getting that done. Um, and I think that is it for the plan. Um, and like I said, the template is all one, it's all one document. I just broke it up into different pieces on this presentation. Now, we're going to get back to those items that we talked about. Um, and I went ahead and kind of put in there uh, where these items would be most appropriate. So if you're talking about the selection of math PD that's aligned with growth areas in your teacher plan, that definitely would be something that your leadership team meeting, your leadership team would talk about. If it's scholastic book fair, it's probably gonna be more um, relevant at a staff meeting or another type of staff meeting. Um, your school cookbook, it's probably gonna be more, it's definitely valuable, but probably more at a staff meeting. Um, a recent attendance data, that is used, that's an area of usually, I think that's a lot of schools have that as an area of growth area. Um, discussion of the wise ways of those indicators, leadership team meeting. Um, so I'll just give you a couple, go back through there. Um, and, you know, an upcoming guest speaker, um, depend, you know, most likely going to be a, at a staff, a regular staff meeting or some other type of staff meeting. I'll let you read some more here. And then again, this one's a little bit longer, but these are some other areas. And again, as you're reading these, think of the leadership team a meeting and structure as a tool to carry out that strategic plan and to continue on with your school improvement journey. And we do think of it as a journey. And here are some professional learning opportunities that uh, through the department, um, we have a link here for the event calendar for the Department of Education. And then also um, there are a lot of initiatives that the department is engaging in right now. So I also gave the link for that as well. It does take you to the department's web page, but then if you click on the initiatives tab, it'll show you all the initiatives that the department is um, engaging in right now. And then here are some resources um, I know there's a lot of some, we did put Tyra Corson on here as well, because that's, if you have like your business manager or somebody in, who's dealing more with the um, the invoicing section or the finance part of it, we have Tyra in here. We also added um, assessment, Krista um, Averill. She has been great in answering a lot of the more, I would call it like the more nitty gritty questions about assessment and then higher education, which um, questions regarding that. 